Hey everybody, on this week's episode of the Jesus Taxi, I'm going to be sitting down here in the taxi with my friend, Jess Stainbrook, and he's going to be talking about filmmaking and Super Bowl and sports outreach. It's all going to be a great time. So join us for the next half hour as we talk sports and Jesus. Okay, everybody, we're up. We are live, and we're with my friend Jess Stainbrook, right? Is yes. that how you say it? That's how you say it. Am I spelling it the right way? Oh my there? gosh, look at you. Lower yeah. thirds right. and everything. Yeah, we're doing what we can. We're doing oh my what we goodness, can. this is awesome. Live TV. Hey, that's folks. right. That's right. So, All right. How fun. Jess, you've been a filmmaker for a while, right? I have been, well, yeah, I started my first company when I was still in college. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, and it actually yanked me out of college. What was that oh, company that's called? Not hitting anybody. <laughs> that company. It's funny because that's actually a great story as well. I mean, uh, you know, everybody'd be like, "Well, is it Jess's video company or what?" Right. And so I sat around. And I thought, man, I want something that's going to be so huge that I can grow into. Yeah. And I came up with this idea of the, and we call I called it Pacific East. Okay. And Pacific East Creative Services, and that's what it became. And people still know me as that. Yeah. So in did the you secular do world, TV commercials or what so was... did a lot of TV work. Had a bunch of corporate uh, clients. Um, started out doing stuff for MTV, ESPN, PBS. So this was in New York. This was actually on the East Coast. I'm from Philadelphia. Oh, Philly. Okay. So while I lived in Philly, we actually did uh, work all over the world. Right. I mean, that that's kind of how it happens. And, you know, like I said, I brought you some swag, man. Nice. Being from Philly, that's awesome. right? We had to bring yeah. this guy. Well, of course. That's the uh, Philadelphia Eagles Super Bowl ring, man. <laughs> Probably the best game ever. So yeah, that's kind awesome. of fun. That is awesome. So did you grow up an Eagles fan then? You know, it's really funny. Um, most of my family's from Pittsburgh. Okay. And so big Steelers fans, but I gotta say, when the Eagles made it to the Super Bowl a couple years ago. That I mean, we were so excited, but it was also one of those things where it was like the best game ever. I mean, literally, I've been to the last 14 Super Bowls. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and it's part of ministry. It's stuff. I mean, it's a combination. Yeah. Our stuff goes to real broadcast networks, but we, you know, when everybody else is talking about football, we're talking about what's most important in life. Yes. Why are you a positive role model? What's define good character? And more often than not, we have this conversation, like Peyton Manning says, faith, family, friends, and football. Right. You know? For sure. And so we really look at it that way. Um, and those are how the conversations go. It's kind of awesome. That is so, awesome. Yeah. I grew, I grew up in Detroit. My dad was an inner city preacher there. Wow. And so I started out as a Lions fan. Uh -huh. And then I went to... A, a TV film school in Minneapolis is where I met my wife. Oh, fun. And she grew up in Appleton, Wisconsin. Uh huh. So she's a big time Green Bay Packer fan. Oh, so I boy. had to marry a little, little bit of conflict oh, there, my right? Goodness, yeah. <laughs> no, they had the Lions lost the other night to the Packers. So That's that was funny. <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 always t I always say to people, I married into the Packers. Yeah. And well, so we're, we're talking, I mean, we can talk openly about Jesus stuff here. Of right? course, yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, then you have to hear. I, so when I started my first company, I was not a believer. Yeah. And it was really interesting because about six years into it, and we were doing phenomenal, making gobs of money. I mean, it was just really successful. And yet God was about to grab a hold of me. Right. And so the short short story is, is that my company got hired to cover the first ever Inside Communist Russia international athletic event. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, and it was an ultra marathon, so teams from all over came in to run a thousand miles across Siberia what? in 15 days. That's and crazy. my company was covering it for the world. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. So, well, the short story is, is that in the midst of that, 
I was actually taken by the KGB because they, they thought I was CIA. Oh, no. And, and I got to spend a little bit of time with them, but it literally <laughs> it literally changed everything in my life. Yeah. Because, you know, you have those points where you literally, whether you believe or not, your first cry is, man, if you exist and you're real right. and you show up, I will follow you anywhere. Right. And ironically, he did and I did. And it, it, it literally changed Wayne. It changed my business. It changed who I was. I mean, it so drastically changed uh, my my personality that when I went back to the company, my company, and told my employees that this had happened, I gave my life to Jesus. Half of them thought I was crazy and quit. So you became a Christian during this whole thing uh -huh. in Russia? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So again, I mean, so did a Russian it, lead you to Christ? It, no, no, no. It, it changed the way I thought about it. So oh, I should right. say that when I got back, I went on a search, huh. and that's and I landed square at, at the foot of the cross, man. That is so cool. It was so crazy. Well, it's interesting too because you got to know, like, I'm on staff with Athletes in Action, right, right. And uh, if people don't know, that's a that's a ministry of crew. Which used to be Campus Crusade. Yeah. Um, and it's the athlete portion. So we deal with pro athletes and college athletes and anybody. Um, but ironically, the two summers before this KGB thing happened and this event, I was racing Hobie Cats down on the Jersey Shore. Right? <laughs> yeah. And so every weekend we go down, we'd sail, we do all these races. And it's a pretty, pretty steady thing. You, you show up on Friday night, you go to the bar. You get up early, you'd race. Right. And as soon as you finish your race, yeah, the, the sailing day, life is a drinking oh, yeah. life. It's a it's, party life. Yeah. Exactly, man. Yep. And so you go to the bar on Saturday night, you get up, you race on Sunday, you collect hardware, you go to the casinos, you go home. Yeah. That's, that was pretty much a weekend on a regular basis in the summer. Well, so we start running into these kids on the boardwalk. And well, they were Campus Crusade. Oh, okay. I didn't, I didn't know what that was. Right. But they were talking about Jesus, and I wasn't having it, man. I didn't <laughs> want to hear it, and it made me mad. Right. And so I started arguing with them. And my friends got a kick out of that, and it was funny, and I was basically tearing them apart. And, you know, then we'd go to the bar. Yeah. Well, sure enough, the next week, we run into them again. Well, I'm still not having it. And my buddies finally were like, dude, we... I'm not doing this for three hours. Right. Like, you fighting with these Christians, no way. <laughs> so you just have and long so, conversations on the street? Oh, them. my gosh, it was crazy. And so every weekend, the whole summer, this is what Saturday night looked like. Yes. Of me going to argue with these Christians from right? Campus Crusade. So there must have been something going on in the conversation that kept you in the conversation. You know what, Wayne? I don't know what it was. I mean, it, I really was out for blood. So you're and trying was, to prove them wrong. What Exactly. That's everything. And so it's funny. So the second summer, same thing was happening. I started studying the Bible <laughs> just so I could out-argue them. And I made a rule. And, I, and my rule was, I'm not leaving until somebody cries or oh. they leave. Oh, no. Oh, no. It was horrible. So it was like a religious jousting oh, thing. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And so, I mean, you look at that that situation. I see that as I was like a Paul right. holding the cults, cults for the people to throw stones at people, right? right? right. Yeah, Only totally. I was the guy throwing stones. So it's so funny. So again, when I dropped into this race in Russia, when all this happened, I had this knowledge and understanding, head knowledge of biblical stuff. Yeah. But I had no idea what it meant to, from a heart standpoint. Right. And like I said, it literally pushed me to a place that I, I could I not not say no. You know what I mean? Right. So yeah, it was crazy. So what? So you? So how? What was the like the actual? Where did you pray the prayer? Or like when you asked and yeah, Jesus in? This is funny too, man. So it was it was December twenty third, nineteen eighty nine. Wow. And if you know anything about Russia, I mean that summer it was still communist. September eighty nine is when Russia opened up. Yeah. And I had actually made friends with the KGB agent. That's when uh, Boris Yeltsin yep. was standing on a tank or something, right? Uh, yeah, and Gorbachev Gorbach let the stuff, right? yeah, opened it up. No, totally, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, yeah, I had made friends with one of these KGB guys over time. And after Russia opened up, he actually called me and said, could I come visit you? Yeah. And I'm like, heck yeah. And so it was really this interesting, he spent about six months with me and... Um, yeah, just just crazy.
conversations, man. That's awesome. So, um, I'm going to pull in for an ad break here for a second. Oh, yeah, sure. So advertise this. That Yeah, it's kind of how it works. This is one of these. Uh, it's a show where I do uh, ad breaks because it's both Christian and commercial. Nice. All right, Lyft, set your own hours. Earn over 1600 bucks in your first month. Just drive 140 rides in 30 days, and that money is guaranteed. Terms apply. Learn how to become a Lyft driver in your city. Sign up today. Be your own boss. Applications are now open. Drivers earn tips. Meet lots of interesting people. Go to Lyft.com today. Use my driver referral code Wayne68712 and start earning cash. You'll be supporting this ministry and my family all at the same time. Become a driver and get or get a ride right now with Lyft. Offer code Wayne six eight seven one two. Okay, good. We are rolling. So, so tell, we're back. We're back. Yes, tell me, yeah, yeah. tell me what's this scarf about? Well, you know, you gotta I, at the world level. It's funny, you know. It, that's kind of our joke with football, American football. You're like world champions. Well, who else really plays? I mean, you know, not really. I mean, we take games to England, but you don't see English guys out there doing this. Right. If they're going to play football, it's going to be football, soccer, right? Right, yeah. And so, yeah, we're... uh, we're always rooting for those kinds of and we always make the american joke too of you know they always leave it to the soccer player to win the game at the end right <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> the little guy the kicker he's gonna do something so right right yeah, it's kind of fun <laughs> yeah yeah man so have, were you an athlete yourself did you do yes okay. i went to uh i went to college on a soccer scholarship oh cool as did my wife and what what school was that uh i went to gannon university for two years and where's Gannon? Gannon is in Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh. It's a private Catholic college. Okay. Um, and that's that's the irony too, man. You would think my time there, somebody would have talked to. Me. I'm an, I'm an, at a at a fully faith based Catholic university. Right. Nobody ever talked to me about Jesus. Yeah. And that just kind of shocked me after I became a believer because I'm like, seriously. You know, but uh, anyway, and unfortunately, a lot institutionalized religion. Sometimes Jesus isn't there. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, I will say that's the cool thing about you know, AIA, FCA. I mean, there's a ton of organizations that really do go out of their way to talk and and come alongside athletes and give them kind of the safe place to talk about if it's religion. You know, I like to say it's not religion. Right. It's really a way of life, right? Of course. It's a lot of choices about And a stuff. relationship with Christ. Yeah, for sure. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that changes everything. That's awesome. So, you, are you married with kids? Tell I me. am married with kids. I think I saw somewhere where you, you brought your kids to press week uh, for the <laughs> Super Bowl. <laughs> My... My kids have been all over the world on movie sets and all kinds of stuff. Um, so, yes, my wife and I, Kina, we've been married 24 and a half years. Uh-huh. Um, we've got three daughters, and uh, they're all in college now. They're all about 19 months apart. Uh-huh. So we're at that weird place of, you know, a junior, uh, a freshman, and a Colorado early colleges. But we will have three in college. So it's kind of nuts. Um, but yes, so we actually homeschooled for about eight years. And that was a decision made on, you know, I was doing some movie work in Hollywood. I was doing some other things. Yeah, I, well, I checked her, your IMDb page. Ooh, uh, what'd you, you find? Uh, that's my real, that's the real stuff. Yeah, that is the real stuff. And yeah. uh, I saw your your F, FS. P-S- uh-huh. FSPN, FSPN is the name of our uh-huh. sports network. It's Faith and Sports Programming Network. Uh-huh. And it actually started out as a joke. We started it in... We had been to... Since 2006. So, eight Super Bowls. Yeah. Um, so, you've done the press week for at least eight Super Bowls. Well, like I said, been there 14 now. Yeah. yeah. So, but, but in 2014, I felt like, you know, we really need a name, a brand, like something that we can work under like there's espn there's cbs there's nfl network right we need people need to know us now they knew our programming right everybody knew our program and they still do as a matter of fact i can show up places and they're like dude i know you're from that show i'm like yeah because right. sometimes i will host but i have younger hosts as well yeah so um and so we were kidding around as a team and we're like well there's ef espn let's be fspn 
and it really started out as a joke. Well, darn if the thing didn't stick. Well, that's a good, and, that's a good name. And everybody actually knows us as, I mean, if we show up and say FSPN, they're like, oh, you're the faith guys. We love you. Right. How do you get maybe a, an athlete that is shy about talking about their faith to open up? Right? Yeah. What's, what's some of, because you've been doing it a while. Yeah, yeah. What are some key questions that you can ask an influencer or, or a Christian athlete that kind of gets them to go, okay, I'll open up and, and share what I've yeah. been that's a good question. Um, you know, we don't always know. Sometimes we know players that we're going to talk to, especially yeah. when we're at the Super Bowl. We might say, you know, hey, th this person, this person. I mean, here was the cool thing about the Eagles. Yeah. Dude, you couldn't shut them up about Jesus. That's awesome. No, I'm serious. Anybody would come up to Nick Foles and they'd say, hey, Nick, tell us about, you know, what's your plan for da da da? You know, what kind of, you know, off that? Da? He'd go, yeah, yeah, hold on. Let me let me talk to you about Jesus first. <laughs> well, they had to listen to him. Right. Right. And he, that guy preached the gospel nonstop the whole week, man. It was so, it was so fun. That's awesome. Oh, my gosh. And, and you know, we don't usually get that kind of recognition. Right. You know, a lot of times people are hostile or i mean just like any time to the gospel you know to some people it's greatly offensive right and so people have you know they purposely bump our cameras or they'll pull our audio cords out or wow they'll try to destroy our shots right 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 well it doesn't work man we're we always get incredible interviews so you've been an eagles fan your whole life <laughs> yeah for so sure. you uh you would have remembered the reggie the reggie De uh reggie oh uh, yeah reggie white, white. Heck yeah! When he, when he, I was a youth pastor in Green Bay, Wisconsin, in the early nineties. Oh wow! And my wife and I used to babysit for Reggie and Sarah White. Yeah, kids. that's awesome. So, you know, he was such an outspoken Christian. I wonder if some of that Eagles evangelistic uh, oh, started out with fire him. started out with him being so outspoken. I'm, you know, it may have. I, uh, I have a buddy from high school, Mike Reichenbach, and Mike was a center linebacker for the for the Eagles. Um, but again, I remember. Reggie Reggie influencing him yeah. for the gospel as well, and him almost embarrassed to talk about it, you know, <laughs> because a lot of times, you know, you know somebody, especially in high school, yeah. we had this band of brothers, right, and we took care of each other, and, you know, anything was going wrong, or somebody was drinking too much or something, we took care of it. That's awesome. But as lives change, and Jesus comes into the picture, sometimes those relationships aren't aren't what they used to be because something has literally changed right right and so right. yeah no i do know that mike was was greatly influenced probably by reggie but you know in a, some other ways yeah but. so when i was in when i was in green bay at, it was it was called bayside christian fellowship at the time now it's called celebration church but uh -huh. reggie would come in and we you know he, he would tithe which was amazing for the Ooh. church and then we he would preach yeah and of course we just let him preach as long as he wants to because <laughs> he's like it's a packer country so he would preach for an hour and a half and was like oh hey everybody wow. you need to follow jesus and, That's awesome. and he was just a, so outspoken in his faith I, him, well brian dawkins is like that too man Do i so when i interviewed dawkins a few times here man i'm like dude when you're retired you need to start a church right because he is just powerful speaker and on fire man that's it really is cool. so crazy it's very cool that's really cool I'm, I'm bringing you into a strategic neighborhood and i'll tell you why in oh, a second we are uh, we are ready for our, our next ad break and i'll tell you why we're in this neighborhood oh cool all right everybody our next sponsor I want to tell you about today in the Jesus Taxi is TopCarBid.com. TopCarBid.com. Sell your car, talk about cars, or promote your other interests. Join the game that pays. For, an, for a modest annual fee, you can list an unlimited amount of vehicles, unlike Craigslist or Auto Trader. Build a profile with a link to your business website, such as LinkedIn, Facebook, or your own website. And as a member, you can write your own articles about what you like or don't like about your car or any other interests related to the automotive industry. Go to topcarbid.com to beat the classifieds game. Earn up to 50 bucks and more for each friend that joins the, on the joins the site on your recommendation join topcarbid.com and follow my link in the description of this video below if you're watching on the internet and today you can sell your car promote your interests and earn cash fast we'll see you out there out on the open road nice so we are in a neighborhood here in castle rock colorado that used to have a friend of mine. His name was the Birdman. He used to play oh, for the Nuggets. He was in our movie. Was he really? He got cut out of Seven Days in Utopia. We did a whole scene with the Birdman. He was part of the mechanic uh, group that was fixing 
the Lucas Black character's car. Oh, wow. But that entire thing got cut out of the movie. Well, I, I've, oh, I've talked to him funny. a little bit on Facebook, and I'm trying to get him on a Jesus taxi. Fun. He's, li- he's living in uh, El- or Los Angeles or Long Who's Beach he or somewhere. now? I don't know if that he's playing. Oh, know. interesting. But um, anyway. He um, had some ink, man. Yeah, he did. Oh, it's my a, goodness. It's some, some expensive tattoos. Yeah. But, yeah, and he really went through it. He went kind of the, through the meat grinder. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. That's but, tough, uh, man. But he's a couldn't you couldn't find a nicer guy <laughs> for sure. That's funny. So yeah, so so what's next for you? I know COVID has everything upended. Like nothing's normal anymore. Oh dear. Yeah, no kidding. That's what? a really good question. Well, it's funny. I um I've been working with a lot of nonprofits. Yeah. And I got involved with a group called the Invisible Disabilities Association. Oh, wow. And I've really been helping them out. And, um, you know, we just produced two incredible shows in the last month. <laughs> we did a thing called the Love Ideas Summit, which basically we gathered, you know, 10 of the top relationship experts in the world. Wow. And we had them donate their time to give like half hour talks about, I mean, our relationships have so changed with COVID. Yes. Right? We yeah. used to, okay, used to say, hey, goodbye to your wife. Right. And you wouldn't see her for eight hours. Yeah. Well, now we're stuck together. And that <laughs> change, I mean, with the kids, right? Yep. And it, it really is a tough thing. The and rhythm of life is totally it changed. Totally changed. So we tried to do something to help people through that. And it was a really powerful thing. And we ended up doing some round tables with it that included like, caregiver conversations i actually did a business conversation with um with ken blanchard yeah one minute manager okay uh greg reed from the secret knock john rulin from uh giftology yeah and phoenix jackson who works with all kinds of sports people oh my gosh well just everybody talking about how do you what does business look like today Yes. Right? It's totally different. Really hard. So, yeah, anyways, it was, that was fun. Um, so, I'm still producing and directing a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I mean, um, if you were looking, you said you looked at the IMDb page. Yep. So, you saw, you know, I did back in, I don't know, the 2011 is when Seven Days of Utopia came out. Um, I did work on the Bible series with Mark Burnett. Right. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think the topic, the topic of Jesus, to me, is such a hot button. Yeah, for sure. And why is it that it's like everyone has, I would say to my wife about this, everybody has an opinion about Jesus. Like, they're either mad about him, or they've met him and they're glad about him, <laughs> or they're like, they think it's dumb, or like, they, there's no, nobody is, is totally. Yeah, well, really whatever totally floats in, your boat, right? <laughs> right, right? Exactly. That doesn't ever happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. For the most part, like, you could bring up Buddha, you could bring up Muhammad, but man, you say the name Jesus, and man, you want to stop a conversation. Yeah, how about it? You know, that that is like, it. you, you either get someone who's animated or someone who's, mm. you know, really shuts it down. What do you think it is about the person of Jesus Christ that oh is that, that does that? Well, I actually think it's it's... When you run into the truth, straight up, with with no judgment, that scares the heck out of you. Right. Right? And, and I mean, that's the fact of if you had your own things to deal with and, and foibles that you could toss back at him, and which people do, right? People say, oh, well, he was a good teacher, but he wasn't really God. I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait a second. This is a guy that it, it, that claimed to be God, and if you say he's a good teacher, but he wasn't God, and he claimed to be, that makes him a liar. So you're saying a liar is a good teacher? Right. Like, holy cow, seriously? Right. Um, you know, you, you got to get your stuff, your story straight here. Yeah. And so there's a lot of stuff like that. I mean, I actually tell a lot of my students, I said, when you're a believer, you have the opportunity to talk to people. Sometimes it's overt, where you say the name of Jesus out loud. Sometimes it's covert. And, and a lot of the stories that I like to tell using video and film are more parable style. Yeah. I love to lead people through a style that then they, they go ser- search out the truth. They seek 
validation of the things that they've felt. You know, it's interesting, the fact that, that we have the Holy Spirit in us, you don't have to produce something that has anything to do with Jesus, and people might know come to know Him. Right. I mean, I've done commercials for like AT&T or corporate sponsors and stuff, and people are like, oh my gosh, your, your commercial so moved me. Oh, that's awesome. Well, you know, it made me feel, I'm like, well, I never said anything. But just like, you know, remember the lady that reached out and touched the robe? Yeah. Right? Jesus didn't know it was coming, but he turns around and he's like, oh, wait. <laughs> who, who touched my robe? I felt the power go out of me. Right, right. That's the whole thing, right? You can produce something and the power can go out through that. And so that's a valid statement to say, holy cow, you're reaching all kinds of people in everything that you do, whether you're talking about it or not. That's good. That's good. Finally, our third and final sponsor is Summit Church of Castle Rock, which many of you know I'm the pastor of. There are three ways to support our ministry financially. You can go to our link on mysummitchurch.com and hit the online giving link. You can actually text your gift to the following number, 303-625-9434, and follow the prompts, or you can snail mail <laughs> a gift if you'd like to. And uh, if you can also hit the no donate button on our Facebook page, and we are so glad that you joined us for this episode of the Jesus Taxi. And I never want to end an episode yeah. without telling you about Jesus mm. you know the whole the whole point of the Jesus taxi is that you would understand that God created you and he made you in his image and he wants you in his family he's you are made for a relationship with God and our sins they separate us from God sins can't be paid for by doing good deeds or like giving money to the poor or, or or like really paying for your own sins no paying the price for our sin jesus died and he rose again and everyone anyone who'll put their trust in jesus can have eternal life and it can be in the moment you say yes to jesus and it can it can happen right now you can pray the prayer with me right now and it's as simple as as a prayer that i call stp <laughs> sorry thank you please sorry thank you please you're saying god i'm sorry for the sins i've committed thank you for dying on the cross for me please come into my heart be my savior and be my lord if you're ready to do that would you just pray it with me right now just pray it with me say dear jesus i'm sorry for my sin i'm sorry for going my own way i believe you died on the cross for me thank you for dying in my place i believe god raised you from the dead according to the scriptures please come into my heart be my savior and be my lord in jesus name amen now if you prayed that prayer would you please tell us about it or tell someone that you prayed the prayer make that confession with your mouth that jesus is lord and that, that belief that god raised him from the dead you you will be saved if you cry out to god the, the bible says he's no respecter of persons he doesn't care if you're black or white or rich or poor he loves you he says all who call upon the name of the lord will be saved and that's why we do this show that's why jess does what he does with the super bowl outreach it's it's amazing so one more time, Jess, thanks so much for being on the show, man. And uh, God bless you guys. Join us next, next time for another episode of the Jesus Taxi. No